My friend Nicholas Brady, who in his own way tried to save the world, lived in Berkeley practically his whole life. Back around 1985, Berkeley, California seemed like an oasis in a country that had become polarized and divided. But fate, or God, or whatever, had something else in store for my friend Nick. And as it turned out, for me too. Look, Nick, I appreciate your interest in the business, but these compact discs aren't going to catch on. Not with our customers. Why not? That digital sound is too perfect. It's cold, metallic. Don't underestimate the human element. Even if CDs catch on, the records here will be worth a fortune. Or nothing at all. Life's a gamble. Be patient. One day, this will all be yours and Rachel's. Then, you can do what you like. Hey, um, Phil just called and he's on his way over. Please don't tell him about last night. Promise. Mm. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye, baby. Sorry, I'm late. My cat got run over by a truck yesterday. That's the bad news. What's the good news? My new novel, getting published. In hardcover this time. Oh, wow, that's great, man. Mm -hmm. Which one? The one about what might have happened had the Nazis won the war. I have an idea you might be interested in. Last night, I woke up and I saw me staring down at myself. I think Rachel saw it too, but now she's not sure. Oh, that's weird. Were you high? Well, you know I don't smoke anymore. I think it was a future me. Could something like that be possible? Time travel? It seemed like I was there to, to help me or warn me or something. Hmm, might be. Did you look any older? No, it looked exactly the same. Maybe it was an alternate itself communicating with you from an alternate universe. Can you use the idea? No, too ordinary. Too ordinary, yeah, well, that's, that's me. Cheer up. Still having a better day than my cat. And so, while the membership lists were destroyed prior to the collapse of the Soviet Union, the code name of this organization has been given to us by our new Russian allies. That name is a Ramchek, an agency of treason and subversion. A Ramchek. Remember that name. This secret organization refuses to acknowledge that democracy and free enterprise have triumphed. Instead, they would turn back the clock. 
lead America into a dark, shadowy future of a godless dictatorship. In the near future, I intend to report to you, the American people, the progress of our war on this cadre of evildoers. In the meantime, good night, and may God bless the United States of America. The President's address this evening contained a real bombshell, didn't it, Hugh? And I wouldn't be surprised if this new crisis didn't have some bearing on President Fremont's decision whether or not to seek an unprecedented fifth term in office. Fifteen years in the office. You'd think that'd be enough for anyone. Not Fremont. Only way you get him out of the old office is in a casket. Record store clerk in Berkeley will have many troubles. When he moves to Los Angeles, he will find what he has been searching for his entire life. I've had the strangest feeling the last couple of days. It's like I've been asleep my whole life waiting for something to happen. We gotta get out of Berkeley. And how do you plan on that? I'm thinking of a plan for a new job. I've already started talking to some of the record company reps down in LA. Maybe they're just ordinary dreams. Night after night? Images always appear between 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. I think I'm being programmed in my sleep. Just because I write science fiction doesn't mean I believe in this stuff. I don't even think flying softwares are real. I think a higher intelligence has seen my needs and is directing me towards something important, some extraordinary goal. So, a powerful entity guiding you. Helping you get your shit together? Sounds good. What do you think it is? Don't laugh, but I got a name for it. I call it Valus. Valus. It's an acronym for Vast Active Living Intelligence System, because that's exactly what it is and how I think of it. Will this Valus provide you with any clues to your amazing destiny? I don't have a choice other than to believe it. I already got a job offer. Progressive Records is the first company that I apply to. That's got to mean something. Just one problem. What's that? I hate Los Angeles. Just for argument's sake, let, let's just say it's something evil. Like the voices that told Mark Chapman to shoot Mick Jagger. Fairness has a destiny for me in LA. What am I supposed to say to that? This is real. This is happening to me. Maybe it's a precognition. Knowing what you're going to do before you do it. I wrote a story about that, remember? The world Jones made? Vaguely. How'd that turn out? Not so good. Instead of being this wonderful talent, being able to see a year into the future, lock Jones into a closed loop. He lost free choice. What do you mean? Well, since everything was predetermined, he was forced to act out his own future. You foresee yourself moving to L.A. So, now you're moving. I still don't understand. Nayless knows about you. I was instructed to tell you what's happening. You're putting me on. Crazy, Nick. We're leaving Berkeley because some imaginary voice tells you to uproot our lives. It's not a practical way to make a life-changing decision. What's better? Columbus listening to the imaginary voices in his head that said, keep sailing, or 
the real voices that said it was all hopeless and doomed. Our results what matter? I think you're gonna miss our last day. Are you kidding? Not a chance. I even bought refreshments. So, thanks. No, for me, thanks. That's the first drink I've ever seen you refuse. Did Vales tell you to go on the wagon? As a matter of fact, yes. Oh, come on, baby, lighten up. You know, I've been trying to get him to cut back on alcohol for years. His wife he ignores, but one little word from the big mind in the sky... All right, okay, enough. Hmm? Hmm? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? To friendship. To Los Angeles. To destiny. Destiny. Oh, God. Excuse me. <clears throat> Could it get any weirder? How are you supposed to relate to a friend whose life is directed from beyond the stars? I mean, what kind of attitude am I supposed to take to that? Imagine being his wife. It's taken over your lives, hasn't it? And the strange part is, Valus is doing a better job than we ever did. I've never seen Nick so... Motivated. It's like he's an entirely different person. Yeah. I've been thinking about leaving him. Oh. What did you decide? Well, the decision has been made for me. I saw a gynecologist last week. I'm pregnant. <laughs> that, that's wonderful. I haven't told Nick. Okay. I'm scared about everything. Tell me it's all gonna be okay. Of course. Of course it's gonna be okay. Though the Cold War may be over, as you know, the secret organization of Ramchek is still committed to undermining our democratic institutions. Accordingly, I have instructed our Attorney General to prepare the appropriate legislation to amend those First Amendment rights that have been so long abused by our country's foes and their unwitting allies among the media elite. No one regrets these measures more than your president. And so, following the instructions of Valus, my friends Nick and Rachel moved down to L.A. I thought of them often, but it was more than a year before I took the eight-hour bus ride down from Berkeley. Sir, can I give you the good news? <sighs> Jesus Christ. Never thought I'd see the day. An old socialist like you driving around in a beamer. <laughs> you look great. Yeah? Ellie seems to agree with you. Still doing your art? Uh, no, not so much. I've been really busy with the baby and all. How's Nick? Oh, he's, he's great. He loves it here too. You know, he wanted to pick you up himself, but he's in the studio with one of his new groups. What about Valus? Phil, look, do me a favor. Don't bring up that stuff. Wow. Far cry from the record store, huh?
Well, glad you could make it. Get in here. Hey. I want you to stick around and check these guys out. I'm going to get a producer credit on this album. Maybe a senior vice president see if market research is right about these guys. You believe in it? Believe in what? All this, my act. What are you talking about? So you bought it too. That's good. That means I must be doing something right. Check it out. This is an image that I've been shown over and over and over again. What the, what the hell? Was that lightning? Hey. Nick? Hey. You okay? I don't know why we had to rush over here. Ezra's just fine. No, he's not. I told you he has a birth defect. Morning. Hey, doctor. Thank you for coming. Me. He's got an inguinal strangulated hernia on the left side. It's already descended into the scrotal sac. Oh, I'm uh, used to parents imagining dreadful diseases in the middle of the night, but rarely with such specificity. I just saw Ezra last week, but. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. Wait a second. Page Dr. Andrews, tell him to come right in. It's an emergency. I don't know what to tell you. It's exactly what you thought. Is he going to be all right? Uh, yeah, he'll be fine. It's a minor problem to correct, but it's potentially very dangerous. Caught us just in time. Hey, how is he? Ezra's gonna be fine. What's going on? How'd you know that? Was it Bayless? Let's get Ezra and Rachel home first, and I'll fill you in on everything. I was amazed at how much difference the desert air makes. It's a lot cleaner than LA. No spies, no police informers. I hear the wind blows in from the east and the north. For some reason, the signal's much stronger. I think Valus is located in our upper atmosphere. How is that even possible? How can any kind of living creature exist up there? Survive. No, see, it's not, it's not a he or a she or even an it. It's a composite entity. It's as if various beings had come together and formed a single body and group mind. How do you know all this? I've had dream after dream after dream from their point of view, from way up looking down. To them, the Earth is just this horrible stagnant pond and humans just swim around in the muck trying to survive. I think they're anxious to help us. That doesn't make sense to me. Highly evolved creatures living in the sky taking an active interest in human welfare. Why would they? I think they feel sorry for us. Try to imagine it. Advanced beings living alongside humans throughout history. Watching our wars, our famines, observing our unbelievable cruelty, our unbelievable stupidity. Wait a second, hold on. I'm getting new instructions. <laughs> You're not gonna believe where they want me to go. <laughs> so. This modest bungalow is the house where the president actually grew up in his formative years.
the dwelling where our beloved president first did homework, first played basketball, first read inspiring biographies of history's greatest men. They figure no one would dare trespass on the holiest of holies. Maybe they have a point. There it is. What's the big deal? It's just a signature in the cement. Probably the name of a contractor. Baby, look at it. Look at the name. It, it's a little faded and hard to see, but you see it, right, Phil? I'm seeing it. But I can't believe it. A ram check. This urge to go to the Fremont Museum. I wander away from the group, and I see it. And then I realize I was meant to see it. Please don't tell me you're starting up with the whole Bayless thing. Little Richard Fremont played in that backyard, and he sees that name written in the cement, a ram check, and for whatever reason, it sticks in his little brain as something sinister. Once a boy grows up, Projects his paranoia on the whole world. Ram check. The super secret cabal of evil revolutionaries. It's a figment of his imagination. There's a their childhood memory. It's genius. The government declares war on a terrorist organization that doesn't even exist. No one can destroy it. No one's safe from it. No one knows when it'll turn up again. What do you think happened to Mr. Ram check? Whoever he actually was. It's dead. Or stuck away in some rehabilitation camp. What else do you expect from Mitchell Fremont? Do you really have to go back to Berkeley? Yep. I gotta finish my book. Besides, I can't be your house guest forever, you know? It's gone so... Weird all of a sudden. No, man. You you just you do what you need to do. We'll be fine. We have Valus to protect us. Back in Berkeley, my life returned to normal, which for me was mostly work, staying up all night with the help of amphetamines. While I was in LA, Nick and I had spent hour after hour talking about Valus. Different theories about how it operated, what it wanted, why it had come now. I had material for about a dozen stories, just based on all the premises we spun out. But none that I could write about, without betraying my friend's confidence. Gentlemen. What can I do for you? You putting on too many protest songs? No, on the contrary, Mr. Brady. May I call you Nick? Sure. Progressive has a very positive rating with the Bureau, Nick. One of the best in the whole recording industry. Just a precaution. You'd be surprised how many otherwise decent, law-abiding Americans think it's necessary to tape informal interrogations like this one. How can I help you? Actually, we're here to help you, Nick. So we happen to know you're currently under a great deal of financial pressure. Now your wife wants your son to go to an exclusive nursery school. She also expects you to put a large down payment on a much larger house. We're prepared to offer you a simple, patriotic way to enhance your salary by up to $2,000 a month. How does that sound, Nick? Tax-free, not even reportable. I'm flattered you thought of me, but honestly, I have Are you turning your country down before you even know what we're asking? Maybe your loyalty evaluation needs to be updated. Wouldn't take any extra work at all. It's a function of the work you're already doing. All right, I'll listen. It's very simple, really. See, despite the generally cooperative attitude of the radio stations and music executives like yourself, 
A number of anti-social protest songs are still getting airplay. Subject Nicholas Brady refused to cooperate with the current investigation. The following is a transcript of the conversation taped with the subject. Recommendation is for this file to be sent to Washington for inclusion in Project Coliseum. What can I do for you? You're putting out too many protest songs? No, on the contrary, Mr. Brady. <laughs> So you're certain nothing of actual monetary value was taken? Yeah, just some papers. Notes from my new novel. Fortunately, I got a copy I keep with a friend. Well, that seems like a strange practice. It's almost as if you're anticipating some kind of problem like this. Not really. It's just a... Uh... You write some very far out science fiction. Are you willing to testify under oath that this isn't some kind of crazy publicity stunt? Are you suggesting? I'm that? not suggesting anything, but we're inclined to believe that you stage this break in yourself. Yeah? Why do I trash my own house and ransack my own files? What better way to throw suspicion off yourself? Susp suspicion of what? That's what we're going to need to investigate further. Help you make yourself available for further questioning if necessary. I'm going home. Forget about the burglary. Forget about the police report. A little late for that, sir. You almost can't blame the government for being curious. So half your stories read like they were written on acid. Your entire readership consists of freaks and misfits. Okay. So they're curious. Doesn't give them the right to break into my house. They probably just want to know about your next novel. I'd like to know, too. It's called Flow My Tears, a policeman said. Sounds political. No. Well, sort of. It's, it's like all my stuff. Did they get the manuscript? No. I sent it to my lawyer. I sent it safe. I sent it over as soon as I was finished. It's time for you to move down here. We should wait to talk till I get to L.A. With any luck, this thing will just blow over. Not likely. Once the authorities open up a file on someone, they never close it. I'll talk to you soon. My books were finally finding an audience. I was getting solid critical reviews too, especially on my really insane novel, The Three Stick Motto of Palmer Eldridge. The rumor got started that I'd written it under the influence of LSD. The notoriety had undoubtedly brought me to the attention of the authorities, but it had also paid off in sales. I was able to make a down payment on a small bungalow in the grungy Echo Park area of L.A. When I wasn't working, I went back, as usual, to hanging out with Nick and Rachel. My fellow Americans, this evening's report will deal with the remarkable progress we've made this quarter with our domestic export, despite a temporary setback in the agricultural sector. The unforeseeable effects of terrorism and subversion remain the only open question mark for our country's continued economic health. You know, at first I thought these test questions were easy, just to see if we're paying attention. But once you actually start thinking about them, they're kind of tricky. Listen to this one. If American citizens must give up certain liberties in the fight for freedom, does it mean that the country is a gaining ground or be losing ground in the war against subversion? Well, you can argue it both ways. By giving up liberties, maybe they want us to say that we can gain ground by fighting with our gloves off. If we weren't losing ground, we wouldn't have to give up our liberties. It's a mind fuck. Yeah. That's the kind of crap they're teaching kids nowadays. No wonder SAT scores are going down. Uh, make sure you mail in our test results tomorrow. We can't afford another late mark this quarter.
infatuation court will mount Cause I am the easiest to sway Catch my fancy and commit mount Riding fresh chemistry kidding? It's Sylvia. She's on your label. You signed her. What's wrong with you, honey? How could you have forgotten that? <laughs> I must be really tired. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something subversive in her music. Just a minute. Hi. Sorry to bother you so early. I'm Vivian Kaplan, and this is my partner, Ted Paulette. We're volunteer workers with Friends of the American People. What? Please, sir, we prefer you use our organization's full name, Friends of the American People. He gives off a better vibe. What can I do for you? We'll explain inside. Make yourself comfortable. I'll get some coffee. Decaf, if you've got it, please. Me too. Caffeine is a drug, you know. Same carbon ring structure as cocaine. We learned that in my political biochem course. We'd like to start with a few routine questions. Okay, I guess. Do you regularly use any illegal or controlled substances? Are you the father of any children out of wedlock, particularly of a racial group other than Caucasian? And lastly, do you believe in God? No, no, and I'm not sure. Is that it? That's just for our database. What we really need is a statement regarding someone you know. A statement? Actually, a kind of summary of his political beliefs. I don't know what friend you're talking about. All my friends live in Berkeley. The one who moved to Los Angeles, Nicholas Brady. Find all the instructions and forms in this kit. And needless to say, it's absolutely inappropriate to share any of this with Mr. Brady. Through various signs and clues, Nick came to believe that on some level he might actually still be living in ancient Rome, an early Christian in the time of martyrdom, that the true year was around 70 AD, that the Roman Empire had never ended.
Here was Nick's strangest vision yet. He was locked up in a cage, but it wasn't him exactly. He was some kind of small mammal, and Richard F. Fremont was our Nero. A bloodthirsty dragon took off and began to descend towards him. I didn't need to see a weird reptile rip my friend apart to know that he was in danger. I would try to make friends with the enemy and disarm them with the truth. I've been working late. You want to join me in a glass of wine? It's Alexander Valley Vineyards. It's new, but it's really good. Maybe just a taste. Do you usually work by candlelight? Do you usually dress like that? You know, I was wondering why you invited me over here. Friends of the American people doesn't encourage its cadres to socialize with their clients. You know, I need help with this statement. I'm not sure what to put down, what to leave out. Don't leave anything out. I think it's because I know so much about Nick that I'm having trouble. You can do it. You're a professional writer. Yeah, but I write science fiction. I'm used to making stuff up. Well, you can't make up anything on these reports, Phil. They're sworn statements. Nick talks to God. What? Or God talks to Nick, depending on how you want to look at it. You sure he's not just crazy? You should be writing this down. I'm going to reveal some of the things God told him. Who cares? I can't report stuff like that. Some of it might be useful to the government. You got me over here for this? There's nothing we could do about a religious thing. Maybe it's not the only reason I invited you over. There must be something else about Brady that could offset all this weird stuff about God. How can you offset God? He's all-knowing and all-powerful. I mean, in terms of political views. One more wine? I'd rather smoke grass. Sorry, I don't have any. I do. It's really killer stuff. I don't want drugs in my house. Grass doesn't count. Really? You afraid I'm setting you up? It's much more dangerous for me than you. Fappers are the straightest kids on the planet. That's why I was glad you called. I knew you'd be cool to smoke with. Oh yeah, why is that? Everyone knows you're a big pothead. It's in the files. Now, are we gonna have sex or what? Grass makes me super horny. not working for fat. You can't do that kind of work full-time, can you? I'm in school. Where at? UCLA? Cal State? Fairfax. Fairfax? Is it Fairfax High? Yeah, I'm a senior. How old are you? 17. Jesus Christ. Don't be such a worry wart. Get your stuff. You gotta get out of here. No one even knows I'm here. Except for Ted, of course. Who the hell's Ted? The boy I came here with this morning, he's my partner. We're sort of engaged. I told him I'd call him when I got home so he'd know I'm all right. You're not going to tell him we had sex, are you? Look, just file your statement on time. That's all he cares about. He's the most gung-ho fapper in the district. I just enjoy meeting people we're assigned to cover. So 
So that's how FAP does it. Compromise someone with an underage girl who doesn't look it, and then turn him into a snitch. We just want you to keep an eye on Brady. I won't do it. We have a lot of information on you too, Phil. I want to see your license. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're not 17. You're 23. If I can help it. Oh, by the way, I hate a small stash of coke. You'll never find it, not even if you tear the whole place apart. Have fun. Oh. I made an appointment with the dentist for you. I can't believe you still have your wisdom teeth. I can't believe how much they hurt. Well, he phoned in a prescription for a painkiller. The drugstore is delivering it in about an hour or so. See ya. Bye. Mr. Brady? Hi. Hi. Where are you? Uh, 1042, please. 15. What's that? What's what? Your, uh, necklace. Oh, the fish sign. It's a symbol used by the early Christians. The Greek word for fish is ichthys. In Greek, the letters are an acronym for Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. In the time of the Roman Empire, a time of persecution, they needed some way to safely identify each other in their meeting places. For many years we have watched them. Their terrible deeds are known to us. Soon they shall be judged, and you will be an instrument of their justice. You're gonna be just fine, Mr. Brady. We have you on a strong antibiotic drip, and you'll be able to get out of here in a couple of hours. I saw great fiery pinwheels. I felt like I was going crazy. I'm not surprised. You've had a buildup of toxins due to that infected wisdom tooth of yours. But don't worry, you're gonna be just fine now. What a relief. Those ridiculous religious ideas and visions, imagine. It was all just an impacted wisdom tooth. Connie, I don't want to argue. Maybe I do have an infected tooth. Maybe? 
The doctor said that was the All reason right, why... Yes, I have an infected tooth. And maybe I have toxins in my bloodstream, and maybe they cause the blackouts and the hallucinations. But that doesn't explain the hallucinations themselves, does it? Hallucinations don't need an explanation. They're not supposed to make any sense. But mine do. Mysteries have been revealed to me. Like the Kennedy assassination. And I suppose Valis told you who was behind the conspiracy. message could have come from a parallel world where Portugal rather than England colonized America. It sounds to me like whoever's delivering the information must be pretty low level. They might have been in a trance state. Yeah, well, that would explain why they didn't know their own name, but why transmit from a parallel world? Maybe it's too dangerous to contact you directly. So, they transmit from an alternate reality where President Fremont hasn't even been elected? Sounds to me like a world where he was never born. I mean, think about it. If there'd never been any Protestant Reformation, the world might have been divided between Portugal and Spain, major Catholic powers. It's odd thinking that science in a more religious world would have been further advanced, but it makes sense. They never fought in these terrible sectarian wars that set civilization back 500 years. Actually, a pretty interesting premise for a novel. Oh, hey, look, no, you gotta promise me you're not gonna write about any of this, man. Not even fictionalized. Yeah, don't be paranoid. I already told Fab you talked to God. He couldn't care less. God's not on the list of subversives. Not yet. I'm sure they're looking into him. There's a woman here to see you. She doesn't have an appointment and she won't say what she wants. Should I say that you're unavailable? Um, no, it's fine. Send her in. Hi, I am sorry to barge in on you. My name's Sylvia Sadassa. Hi. Hi. You're a singer-songwriter, aren't you? What gave you that idea? No. Um, I'm here to apply for a job. Sorry, I, I don't do the hiring. Do you mind if I sit down for a second? I just, uh, I'm just getting over an illness. Are you okay? Can I get oh, yeah. anything? I'm sorry, you know, I'm fine. Thank you. I'm sorry. What kind of guitar do you have? Uh, Gibson. But I don't play it professionally, though. Why do you ask? I just assume that anyone that has a passion for the music business must be somewhat musical. Do you write songs? Just poetry, but I do great secretarial work. I take shorthand and I type 70 words per minute. I'll make sure personnel sees you, but we get hundreds of applications every month. If you get any kind of job here, it'll be a miracle. 
I guess this proves Velos isn't infallible, huh? You can't give a recording contract to a secretary, can you? Well, it's amazing how much of the dream is true. Maybe she just needs a little encouragement. Don't we all? Here's the weirdest part. I looked at her resume. She's divorced, but she's still using her ex-husband's name. You'll never guess what her maiden name is. What's that? Aramchik. Sylvia Aramchik. Could be a coincidence. She even grew up in Placentius, the same town as the president. It's just a funny coincidence. I used to get asked about my name all the time. Actually, I, I have a small confession that I want to make. What's that? Sadasa is not my real name. I've never been married. But President Fremont made it impossible for me to live with a name like a Ramchek. You can understand that, right? A friend of mine and I one night found the name of Ramchek written in the cement just outside the house where Fremont was born. Yeah, I know. Grandfather did that when he was a teenager. So why Progressive Records? Why'd you come to us? Well, you have good artists. It just seemed more exciting than working for a, a lawyer or an oil company. I want to sign you to a recording contract. You've got to be kidding me. Doing what? Singing. You have a gorgeous soprano voice. I've heard it. You have? Where? Something to drink? Glass of wine? Uh, I wish I could. Uh, just a lemonade. Thanks. Up soda, please. Thanks. You don't drink? Uh, not anymore, no. It affects my eyesight. Mm, when I was sick, I would sometimes go totally blind, so... I'd be bumping into walls. If you don't mind my asking, what was wrong with you? Cancer. Lymphoma. The doctor said it's unknown for anyone to have it enter their brain to survive. He says if I live another year, he'll have me written up. Do the doctors know why I went into remission? Well, they never know. But I think it was prayer. Because when I was going blind and I couldn't hear, and I was having seizures from the medication. I used to tell people it was God healing me. You're an extraordinary person. Medically, maybe. Otherwise, all I can do is type and take dictation. In Nick's vision that night, he was shown row after row of fish tanks. He was viewing all of this from the vantage point of a superior life form, perhaps from the viewpoint of Velus itself. Each of the fish tanks was an alternate Earth in an alternate universe, swarming with life. Here was a good universe, he realized filled with happy creatures living in harmony and beauty. But there were also other kinds of worlds. Murky and frightening. He suddenly realized that he was now looking at how Velas saw our own reality. One of the worst. It was a small crab living at the bottom, slyly concealed behind a boulder, alone and frightened, afraid to venture forth until he saw its glow. Daddy. Daddy. What's up, buddy? I'm thirsty, Daddy. It's a game, just try a little bite. Now your secret name is Paul. Can you remember that name? Paul? Such a good boy. 
to them, or is this like an unlit button on the intergalactic switchboard? It's out of contact. It's lost in the dark. And now it's like an emergency 911 call has finally gotten through. I've gotten through to who? Aliens or God? <laughs> That's a tough question. Maybe the answer is both. Maybe it's the God of the Old Testament, the God who spoke to Abraham and Moses. Maybe he was an alien. If you're kidding around, but an advanced life form would seem like God to an ancient tribe of nomads. Nomads wandering in the desert? Because the transmission's clear? I think Velas has always been there, ready to help mankind. Inspiring all the great prophets. Moses, Confucius, Buddha, Jesus. Maybe even some of the poets like William Blake. And now you, the next avatar, the second coming. Behold the mother of Sylvia Sadasa. Whose mother? Sylvia Sadasa, woman we just hired at work. In my vision, she was signing up young Richard Fremont for something, but signing him up for what? She used a red fountain pen. Red, subversive. Signed up. Okay, okay, I get it. It's clear, economical direction. It's like a political cartoon. What is? The scene I witnessed, it symbolizes something that happened to Richard Fremont in his late teens. The Fremonts and the Aramchecks, they lived on the same block, right? Mrs. Aramchek was an organizer for the Communist Party. She must have recruited him back then. Fremont's not a communist, he's a fascist. We get hung up on names and labels, they don't mean anything. Communists are all really fascists. And Fremont the fascist is the first communist president in the United States. It makes perfect no, sense no, to this me. This is too far-fetched. Richard Fremont, America's most famous red baiter, a secret communist? Yes. I'm sure he started out as a youthful idealist. But little Dickie turned out to be exactly what Mrs. Aramchek was looking for. A sleeper agent that could rise to high political office. Why would the Soviets and America's right wing both back the same man? It doesn't make sense. And by the way, we won the Cold War, didn't we? Yeah, that's what Fremont and the Russian puppet regime want us to think. I mean, what's the difference between right wing cops in the States and left wing cops in Russia? The KGB, the CIA, FAP, 
They're all different aspects of the same security state apparatus. Why would they reveal this kind of top secret information to you? Somehow I must be in the right position to do something with the information. I gotta admit, it'd be pretty fucking fascinating if it's true. The assassination of JFK and both his brothers by supposedly disaffected loners. It was to get Fremont elected. It was the only way. And then to keep him in power, his rich cronies just went around and bought all the largest voting machine manufacturers. No wonder a guy almost no one likes continues to win the presidency by the largest margins in history. How's it going? Great. Thank you again for getting me this job. I had a feeling you belonged here. It's funny you should say that. I had a dream about this record company last night. I was at a recording session and I remember thinking how wonderful the singer was. And when I picked up the album cover, it was me. I'm interested in dreams. Have you had any other strange ones lately? The truth is I came here because of a dream. I was in this beautiful green valley and I was walking toward this mountain. And it turns into a building. It had a plaque on the entranceway and it just said progressive on it. And I could hear this incredibly sweet music coming from inside. I was worried that you wouldn't show up. Mr. Brady, your wife just phoned. She says it's urgent you get a copy of the Times and look at page three. <clears throat> According to the official Russian news agency, a respected Moscow astrophysicist has reported the discovery of unexplained radio signals from what he believes may be an extraterrestrial source. Professor Georgi Miyaski has detected short information rich signals as the source passes over Earth's night side. The U.S. Space Agency has already gone on record stating the signals most likely originate from an abandoned and forgotten Earth satellite. Russian authorities have announced plans to deploy a space probe to photograph the mysterious transmitter. Meanwhile, earlier today on I-5... Intense high-frequency bursts, always at night. Don't you receive your images, your voices, at 3 a.m.? It fits. You're not crazy. I never thought I was. You and Phil were talking about satellite orbiting the Earth, right? Well, I remember you saying that. Well, that was months ago. And you know how I am about theories. Like planes land at LAX, new one every few minutes. Our latest theory is that the messages come from a parallel universe. Who cares about your theories? This is real! Every day the satellite seems to be the door of someone's reach. For years, Nick had placed his faith in the instructions of Velas. Moving to L.A., going to work for Progressive Records. He thought of Velas as all-knowing, a manifestation of God's will. If Velas was just a satellite, it reduced something limitless to a finite reality. A mere machine. Every day the Breathe deeply. Forsake you? Is your belief so weak? Where am I? 
A place above the stars. This is the place where you were truly born. I come from above the stars? Many times. Only now are you remembering who you really are. Who am I? Everyone. And all things. You ask to be broken down and healed. This is that breaking down and healing. Soon you shall be with us for all time. I'm not gonna die. I won't cease to exist. No one truly dies, and nothing is ever lost. There is nowhere for anything to go. There is only here and now, for all time. Now that you have remembered, there can be no forgetting. Nick! You are a lucky man. I don't feel so lucky. I got the world's worst headache. Well, I'm not surprised. You've been through a lot. Let's take a look. Well, the steering wheel did most of the damage. I'm afraid you're going to be with us for a while. This kind of trauma... What the... Is there something wrong? Just a minute. Wow, your skin's hot. Is this tender? No. Look, I'm glad you're all right, but how is it possible? The satellite healed me. There's something else I've got to tell you. The new secretary at work, Sylvia. She's part of all this, too. Are you sure you can trust her? I don't know. I think so. I'm still just finding my way here. Look, there's no real chance of overthrowing Fremont, is there? Probably not. But it's still worth trying. Yeah? And what if it ruins our lives? And our son's life? My friendship with Phil, writer of pulp science fiction stories, is a false lead. The authorities are looking for something subversive to show up in his books. But the fact is, we have a better chance to get a message out in a song. If we're caught, they'll put us in prison or kill us. So I'm making this videotape for you, Ezra, so that one day you'll know the truth. Mr. Brady, is something wrong? I know about your mother. What do you mean? What are you doing here so late? I know that she was a recruiter for the Communist Party. And I know that she signed up Richard Fremont. I heard about your car crash. Are you all right? You're talking crazy right now. Fremont and the party think that their secret is safe. But as a little girl, you must have overheard conversations. You're the only person outside of the highest ranks of the party who knows. That's why they tried to kill you with cancer, isn't it? Why would the government want to harm me? I'm nobody. We are supposed to work together. Fremont's secret will go out as a song in the form of a subliminal message. I'll make sure that it saturates the airways before the authorities get wise. Listen to me. My mother's been a down-to-earth Republican her whole life. She's just an ordinary woman saddled with the name of Ramchek. The police have investigated her over and over because of it, and it's lunatic stuff like this that gets innocent people into trouble. Your friend Sylvia called. What did she say? She's at the La Paz bar. She wants you to meet her there. I said before offended you, I didn't mean it. It's okay. I had no idea how I was supposed to react. I think I'm being watched. I've uh, received new transmissions since I last saw you. And I'm to initiate you further into the organization we're doing uh, next. Organization? A ram check. A ram check really exists? Sure. Why would Fremont waste his time trying to stamp out an imaginary group? So. What I said about your mother is true. Basically, yeah. What is a ramp check? It's the people contacted by the satellite. 
which in turn receives instructions from a star system called Albemuth. Life on this planet came from there originally. So whenever we fall into overwhelming difficulties, the satellite serves as our link back to Albemuth. I think I intuited most of this already. Yeah, Ramcheck includes hundreds, maybe thousands of people, mostly here in the former Soviet Union. We're each contacted individually, so only the satellite knows who and how many, where, and exactly what we're supposed to do. Last call. What would you like? Something strong. But, um, I guess I'll settle for club soda. i uh, make that too. Thanks. Valus has done it before. During the time of Jesus and the early Christians. Didn't quite work out then. I always thought I made up that word, Valus. That word was put in your mind. Valus is how we all refer to it while we assimilate the shock. Shock? Yeah, the shock at discovering your mind's being invaded by an alien life form. <laughs> Conjures up horrible images of Martian insects knocking over the Golden Gate Bridge. But this invasion is for our benefit, Nick. You and I and the others were chosen by Valus. Will they leave once Fremont is destroyed? If we manage to destroy him? Our protectors, Nick. They only come when we need them. I had to see her for myself. Has he shown you pictures of her son? I am so sorry about this, Mrs. Brady. You're going home. Come on. I need you to go home. I'll explain everything to you later, but you have to trust me. What are you doing to us? I thought we were happy. It's not what you think. I don't know, maybe it's worse. Are you in love with her? Rachel, you are the only woman I've ever loved. The only woman I'm ever going to love. Then what are you doing? You have to trust me. She doesn't understand. Did you really expect her to? Do you expect anybody to understand this? Well, I hope she would. My crazy friend Phil understands, sort of. Maybe you should go home. No, this is more important. You sure? No, I'm not sure. I, I can't let my kid grow up in a world like this if I can do something about it. The satellite's been up there for thousands of years. What the ancient Hebrews were to Egypt and the early Christians were to Rome, we are now to this corrupt new American empire. It's an ancient fight, Nick. The values of the individual against the supremacy of the state. That's why the confession kids, that's why the growing police supervision. Over half our organization's been discovered and eliminated. Aren't you afraid? <laughs> I would be, if it weren't for Fire Bright. That's how I refer to the plasmatic entity within me. It's like a little egg of silver, cold, pale fire flowing with life just right up here. It's strange having it inside us, just alive but unnoticed. When we're killed, does he die too? When the body's destroyed, he leaves. But they won't desert us. So just as you and I have housed and sheltered them, they'll take us along with them into eternity. As a reward for succeeding? No, nope. what they value is the attempt, not the achievement or the ultimate result. They judge us by our intention, by our hearts. This just in from Moscow. Russian authorities report that an accidental explosion aboard the intercept missile launched to photograph an allegedly extraterrestrial satellite 
has destroyed both the satellite and the missile. The cause of the blast is unknown. And now turn... Must be a lot of partying tonight at the Kremlin in the White House. Well, I'm glad. At least it's over and done with. It is not over. And it is not done with. With great pleasure, I now authorize Project Coliseum, our toughest laws yet in the fight against terror and subversion. you've got to expect that they're going to fight back. We knew once they pinpointed the location that they would destroy it. Oh, can another satellite be sent? There's one already on its way from Albemuth, but even traveling at the speed of light, it won't arrive for hundreds of years. Well, that's not going to do us any good. It's hopeless. It's not. I've written down the material. What material? The lyrics. Use it on an album you expect to sell really well. What's the message supposed to be? Just take a look. It reads like nothing at all. It's completely innocuous. Do you know what it really means? Well, I heard the final recorded version in a dream, and it goes something like, come to the party, and it just sounds like a fun party song. And then later, the vocal line goes, join the party, and the singer goes, everybody join the party. And then the subtract goes, is everybody at the party? Is everybody present at the party? Only if you listen closely, you can hear what they're actually singing, which is, is everybody's president at the party? No, okay, I get it. It's like the, uh, the Beatles, the I am the walrus, smoke dope, smoke dope, everybody smoke dope in the backup track. Right, and enough repeated listenings and the word gets through, the message gets through. I mean, is that all there is to it? Oh, uh, what a grand chick. What? What a grand chick, that's part of the chorus. Only the backup vocals change from what a grand chick to a ram chick. Ah, uh, the Fisher Kings are in the studio this afternoon, they'd be perfect for it. Why don't you go on ahead? The less we're seen together right now, the better. And Duncan join the party. I fucking hate this song. Dude, relax. Let's Party is gonna go out as a single. If it doesn't sell, it's not gonna be on the album. Well, it doesn't sound like any of our other material. I know. Your contract gives us the right to pick material. We've never done it before. We're probably not gonna do it again. Let's just get this thing laid down and get out of here, okay? It's almost midnight. Young lady to see you, Mr. Brady. Um, send her in. Hello. I'm Vivian Kaplan from Friends of the American People. How can I help you? We understand that you have an employee here by the name of Sylvia Aramchek. As I'm sure you know, there's also a subversive organization calling itself Aramchek. Would you like to make a voluntary statement concerning this coincidence? The only thing I know about a Ramchek is that it's Sylvia Sadasa's maiden name. How did you happen to hire Ms. Ramchek? She came in looking for a job. I felt sorry for her because of her recent bout with cancer. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm very busy. Do I have to answer these questions right now? What's this new song you're releasing by the Fisher Kings? Let's party. Everyone at Progressive is talking about it. We think it's going to be a surefire hit. We'd like a copy to review. It's not even mastered yet. 
A demo tape would be fine. We could probably get a demo sooner. It's our opinion, Mr. Brady, that you're having a sexual affair with Mr. Ramchak. Whether I am or not is my business. Would you be willing to write a statement concerning the political loyalty of Ms. Ramchak? I'm sorry, but mutual spying by friend upon friend is destroying the fabric of our society. You can write that down in your little book, put it in my file. When can we have the demo tape? Sometime next week. And it will be the same as the master? Yeah, more or less. You know, more or less really isn't good enough, Mr. Brady. Are you going somewhere? I'm leaving. I want you to talk to our lawyer in the morning. Are you asking for a divorce? I think the house is bugged. These are our financial papers. I've signed over everything, the house, the bank accounts to you. It's Sylvia, isn't it? It's not Sylvia. It's what we're trying to do together. It could be dangerous. I don't want it to affect you and Ezra. But anything you do not affect us. We love you. Remember that. I will too. Let's Party is our hottest upcoming release, and they know we have a lot of time and effort invested into it. it stands to reason that they're suspicious. Now, what if it's a trap? What if they just want us to produce it so they have some hard evidence? If they really knew what we were up to, they would just arrest us. I think we need to move forward. Even if there's no chance of us getting away when we get caught? This project's been building for years, Nick. Bayless may no longer be here to protect us, but within each of us, there's a new life that's eternal. Well, I'll give that little fat bitch a copy of the demo tape for now, and then when we press the record, I'll make some copies from the master minus the subliminal material. That way, if they break in, whatever they get, I'll match their tape, and then start shipping the real thing. Wish me luck. I have a, an appointment with my doctor this afternoon to see if I'm still in remission. People think they're listening to a dumbass rock song, but what they're actually hearing is Fremont's a red, Fremont's a red. Better a dead Fremont than a red? Something like that? Basically, yes. And when it sinks in, an outraged citizenry marches to the White House in mass and overthrows the government? Is that the sequence of events? It has to be done. Listen to me, it's not too late for you. Go back to Berkeley. 
Put some distance between yourself and this mess. What the hell? If I'm going down, I'm going down with people I love. Press a million copies of the record. Here's to subversion. Here's to a ram check. To subversion. You know what this probably means, right? Yeah. And somebody else is gonna have to write the great American science fiction novel. I'll be straight with you guys. We planted a recording device to monitor your conversation at the club. Orders have been given for Progressive Records to be closed and all its assets seized. How insane. A subliminal message that our president is himself a secret subversive agent? I have nothing to say. I want an attorney. Take him out and shoot him. He might be able to tell us something more. Nothing we don't already know. Bring him back. I'll tell you everything he told me. I'm sorry. The satellite's already infected him. But the satellite's gone now. An egg has been laid in his head. An alien egg. Where are you taking them? We always kill them before they have a chance to hatch. This one too? Give me a few moments with him. We intend to let you go on living, Phil. We'll even publish books under your name. I'm an American citizen. I have rights! In fact, they already exist. We've been having them written for several years now. Your style's easy to imitate. I'd rather you just shoot me. The novels will be published anyway. Book by book, 
you'll evolve to more conservative views. Since you're getting older, it won't be unexpected for you to mellow out. Let me talk to Nick before you kill him. Will you cooperate with the publication of your new books? Interviews, signings, sci-fi conventions? Hold up on Brady. Take him to a cell for now. Code 5 on Brady. Was that a mistake? No, that's okay. Thanks anyway. I'm sorry, Phil. It's too late. It's police policy not to delay eliminating alien-controlled subversives. Number two, so you can see for yourself. Whiskey, single malt. So soon you stop the song from getting out. We shut down the record company before they duped the master. We got all the subliminal tracks too. Join the party. Oh, no, it's let's party. They sing join the party later on. A grand chick saved me, put back together my whole world. And the background is a ram chick saves the world. A bit unsubtle, don't you think? It might have worked. Oh, sure. Is everybody president at the party? We use subliminal techniques, too, but not so crudely. And for different ends? Want to see your new book? No, thanks. It's called The Mind Screwers. You should give it a try. It's about an invasion of hideous space worms who work their way into people's heads and rape their minds. Real subtle. Just came to tell you I'm sorry you didn't get to talk to Nick Brady before he died. If you want, you can talk to the Aramchek woman he was conspiring with. Do you know her? No, I never got to meet her. Are you gonna shoot her too?
here, Phil. Nick's friend, right? Science fiction writer. Is he okay? No, he isn't. They shot him. Let me see. And you're sure that's true? They showed me his body. Hmm. I suppose I'm next. No trial, no investigation. They're really afraid of us. That's right. I don't think they'll kill you. They said they want you to write crappy novels for them full of pro-government propaganda. The books are already written. It'll just be my name on them. That's good. It means they don't trust you. It's when they trust you that it's bad. It's the next worst thing to be on their side. I'm sorry for all this. For what they got you into. It's okay. We're immortal. Bayless conferred that on us, and they will on everyone someday. I don't feel too bad, though. I feel like we put up a good fight. Time's up. lousy their novels are. I'm gonna find out the hard way. So that's how it all came down. My friend Nicholas Brady had tried to save the world and failed. And I found myself in this place. The dark night of a soul. Alone and forgotten scribbling furtively on scraps of paper that no one would ever get a chance to read. So, you used to be a writer, huh? Yeah. In a way, I still am. Were you a member of a ram check? about it? The friends of mine belong. Dead? Yeah. So, what's a Ramchek teach? Are they really die-hard communists? No. They think we shouldn't put our faith in any human rulers. But there's a vast intelligence above the stars that guides us. It's interested in our welfare. It sounds like a religious idea. I always thought that a Ramchek was a revolutionary organization. It's both. A subversive organization guided by supreme higher power. I think our loyalty should be to the values of that higher entity alone. You believe that too? At first I didn't. Now maybe. So this uh, supreme being, does it tell the Ramchek people what to do? They called it Velas. Spoke to them in visions. We'll again someday, I believe that. You're a strange guy. You ever hear its voice? No. But I wish I had. Still got my printing supplies hidden away. Might be able to run off some literature for you and your Ramchak friends. You interested? Yeah, very much. First, I gotta get back to my friend's wife and son. Make sure they're okay. You think a Ramchak would take me? I need help. I can't get anywhere alone. Sure. Maybe they have already. I've never heard any voices. Your own voice might be the voice. How about that? 
Nobody's ever said that to me before. You, you think believing about a heavenly power got them anywhere? Not in this world. I gotta tell you something maybe you don't wanna hear. I know you love your friends and maybe they're happy spirits somewhere up in the sky, but even if they are, that's not good enough. They gave their lives for that belief. What I'm trying to say is it's gotta be something here first. This is where the suffering is. This is where the, the injustice is. This Dallas or God or whatever you want to call it has to do something for us here. What the fuck good is it? Hey, what's this I hear about the Aramchek people having this beautiful silver egg placed in each of their foreheads? That's what they believe. My theory is it enters along the optic nerve to the pineal gland by means of radiation beamed down by the satellite. The egg hatches when they die and incorporates them into the vast living entity in the stratosphere. I got a confession to make. I know a little more about the Ramshack than I admitted. He used to be a preacher. A beautiful silver egg guarantees immortality. That's in the Bible, Phil. Jesus speaks about it several times. See, the real meaning was known only to his disciples. Now it's coming back. Tell me more, preacher. I'm not a preacher anymore. Religion is shit. You know, I, it's more honest work being a plumber. I believe what my friends say are true, and yet you still think that we need I to I still be... say the work has to be done here on Earth. Let me ask you this. Where did Jesus do his work? Where did he teach? Hey, boss. We take five. It's hot out here. Look at those kids watching us. <laughs> That's it. That's the song. What? That's the song. <laughs> 